Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. Welcome uh, to the technically the 11th Tech Vista. This is our 10th anniversary, but we have had 11 Tech Vistas. Um, I remember fondly coming here for the first Tech Vista a long time ago. I was doing Saikat's job. But they made me dress in fancy suits in those days. But I'm glad we have gotten rid of that. But anyway, good morning to all of you. It's a pleasure to see so many young faces in the audience. Actually, it's a mixed pleasure because it just reminds me how old I have become. But I remember when I was your age um, and the enthusiasm I had uh, for computer science and electrical engineering and that sort of stuff. So I'm so glad you're here. I'm going to give you a brief introduction to Microsoft Research. I'm going to touch upon a little bit about what, uh, what activities we do in Microsoft Research in general and in India in particular, and uh, about some of the programs that we have which might be of interest to you. And I'll give you a brief outline of the rest of the day. Saikat will uh, introduce uh, each speaker and each panelist in much more, great, uh, much more detail. OK, who are we? We are basically a collection of world-class researchers and scientists. We are spread all over the world on multiple continents in multiple countries. But no matter where we are and who we are, we have a shared mission. We are all doing what we believe is uh, a shared go uh, trying to achieve a shared goal. What is our mission? Our mission has largely remained unchanged since the founding of uh, Microsoft Research in 1991. Um, we restate it in different ways, but fundamentally there are three things that we try to do. First thing, and the foremost thing that we try to do, is to advance the state of the art in the fields that we do, do research in. Now, we don't do research in every field in computer science, but we do a substantially large subset of, uh, uh, of areas in computer science, and we excel in all of them. We are at the forefront of most of the conferences, uh, academic conferences, we produce uh, top-notch researchers in each field who, won, uh, who win lots of awards and so on and so forth. So fundamentally, uh, we are uh, advancing the state of the field in every, every area that we work in. Second, we would like to make sure that the innovations that we bring about benefit the company, and we try to affect the products of the company by transferring innovative ideas into the product groups. Uh, we have had a long history of doing that. There is hardly any product that Microsoft has shipped that has not been affected by some of the work that we have done in research, and we are very, very proud of it. Finally, we also act as scouts for Microsoft. We are the eyes and ears of Microsoft looking ahead, trying to understand what are the disruptive technologies, what are the disruptive trends that technology throws up. Um, this is a fast-moving world, as you know, and things happen that uh, corporations need to react to. And we are, uh, in many ways, we, Microsoft Research, are in many ways the, the scouts for the corporation. Labs. We have labs scattered all over. I'm not going to uh, walk you through each one of them. As I said, the first one was founded in Redmond, and India was founded in 2005. The researchers' counts are not exact. It was right at the time I took the snapshot. We basically have over 700 PhDs, uh, very high-quality talent, as I mentioned in the previous slide. You might think, you might ask, why is Microsoft Research distributed worldwide? Why not just put it near the mothership in Redmond in, uh, in, uh, in the United States? First and foremost, we go where the talent is. Uh, the mountain will go to Muhammad if needed. So we go where the talent is. And talent, as you know, is widespread all over the, uh, all over the, all over the world. So we are in multiple continents where there is talent. We also go where there are university connections. We often locate research labs in centers of, near centers of learning. Um, we have a lot of talent in India, a lot of university connections in India. We are here in India. Uh, we are in Cambridge, England, next to, the, next to the university, and so on and so forth. Sometimes we locate a lab in a particular geographical area because it gives us a better understanding of how to do a certain kind of research. Uh, for example, Language-based research, if you want to do natural language processing, it's sometimes handy to be in a country that has over 20 official languages. 
Um, so, you know, we do a lot of NLP work in India. We also do certain work that has societal impact, things that usually go under the rubric of ICT4D or technology for emerging markets. So, for example, in India, we do, we do, we do those kinds of research. And we find it more appropriate to do these kinds of uh, research in areas uh, that have a need for them where the climate is correct that we can actually test our ideas at scale. And we also go where the next billion users are. Um, we have significant growth in, in the usage population in both India and China, and we are located there uh, for the obvious reasons. The research areas in Microsoft, I, earlier on I said we are, we are world-class researchers doing work in a variety of areas. The variety of areas is actually quite, quite a lot. And I'm not going to cover all of them. We do at least research in at least 50 areas. Please go to our website and you can see a large number of areas. When we do research, our ideas are mostly curiosity based. It's driven by ideas and technology, not based on product or business strategy. We sometimes do take uh, our knowledge and apply it to short term um, trends in the market. For example, there is a lot of work, you know, flash devices have become uh, a common uh, mode of storage, and we have done a lot of work on innovative uses of flash. But we also do highly speculative work, which take a long, long time. For example, in quantum computing, we don't know how the, the world is going to shape up in the next 15, 20 years. So we do work uh, in very speculative areas as well. In Microsoft Research, we have a lab of about 50 to 60 people, but we work on a variety of areas. And I'm not going to cover all of them. They we do work from foundations of computer science, we do distributed systems, systems work, um, we do natural language processing, machine learning, and so on and so forth. There are many, many areas. We also have a group of uh, engineers uh, that do advanced development. We also have applied scientists who work clo closely with the product groups. So, and we have something called Microsoft Research Outreach, which I shall talk to you in a minute. Let me, let me spend some time. It looks like I have time. So the research that we do can be uh, classified into four general categories. We do things that are very open-ended. On the, on the y-axis, you see the nature of work that's either reactive, reacting to short-term trends in, in, in technology, and some things that are very open-ended that take many, many years to bring to, fr to fruition. That's on the y-axis. On the x-axis is the nature of the engagement. Is it a short-term engagement or long-term engagement? And we have research projects. Uh, as, as I said, there are 700 of us doing work. We have research projects which are in various quadrants. And we are very proud of this diversity, uh, which means that if you have a good idea, it fits in one or many categories. We can do that. We have the freedom to pursue those ideas without constraint to whether it fits in our charter or not. Most of the time, we can do, uh, we can do that. I briefly mentioned there is a group called MSR Outreach. This is an integral part of MSR. And the MSR Outreach is primarily charged with advancing the state of the art by strength strengthening the education ecosystem. We also try to um, address, the group tries to address societal challenges and also to inspire scientists. Now, the reason we are here is because MSR outreach takes its goal of inspiring scientists, the next generation of scientists, and to strengthening the research ecosystem very, very seriously. This is why we meet once a year, uh, sometimes twice a year, which is how we have 11 uh, uh, tech visas. And we try to encourage people like you, um, undergraduates and early graduate students, thinking of pursuing a career in research, to come and work with us. And we, uh, put up, uh, we, put a, we invite a bunch of world-renowned speakers researchers who have uh, done significant work in computer science to share with you their enthusiasm and their work. We have panels that uh, describe to you many aspects of working as a computer scientist. And in general, we would like all of you uh, to come and join us in, in future years as a computer scientist. I don't mean work at Microsoft. I mean join the field of computer science and computation in general. And that's what we strive to do in these, uh, in these tech vistas. Let me briefly tell you what's in store today. I'm not going to do an uh, exhaustive uh, 
introduction to the topics, Saikat will do that as his, as his MC. After I get off the stage, the next talk is by Professor Raj Reddy. Professor Raj Reddy needs no introduction. He's a Turing Award winner, um, and Saikat will tell you more about his achievements. He's going to talk about this conundrum that we face in the industrial world or in, in the world today, that is how do you deal with a lot of information and lack of attention span. We don't have enough time to deal with all the information. So how do we organize that? How do we make use of that? That's what Dr. Reddy is going to talk about. Following that, um, we are going to have a talk by Professor Ed Lazowska um, on the great enthusiasm that he has observed in, in, in people pursuing computer science. This is, um, he, he is um, in the University of Washington in Seattle. And his perception, is, uh, his perception is based on what he's seen in the United States. And I think it is something that you would see all over the world. Now, Ed is very dear to my heart because he's my thesis supervisor. And I don't think I would have been here without his help and encouragement over these 20 years. So I'm so glad to see him here on the 10th anniversary. Following um, Lazowska's talk, we are going to have a panel discussion, which will be very uh, interesting and hopefully very useful to you. It's by a panel of very distinguished researchers who have uh, done great work in their own fields and who have considerable experience uh, doing research. So they are going to talk about what, what does it mean to do great research and how to have a good time. Because if you don't have a good time, you're not going to continue doing that. So please uh, pay attention to what the panelists have to say. It promises to be a, a lively discussion from multiple viewpoints. Following that, we'll have a question and answer where uh, all of us will be back on the stage and you can ans uh, ask people questions. In the, after lunch in the afternoon, we're going to have two talks. The first talk is going to be by um, Dr. Janet Wing, uh, who's my boss. She's going to tell you about computational thinking. In a nutshell, um, it's about thinking like a computer science or how do you use the tools that computer science gives you in solving real life problems. Following that, Sorry, I didn't mean two talks, three talks. Following that, we'll have a talk on a project that we have done in Microsoft Research India called Massively Empowered Classrooms. This is a project that has been deployed in many universities and many colleges. It is aimed at uh, bringing online education to colleges in India in a, in a cost-effective and uh, pedagogically effective way in a much better sense than what, uh, say, MOOCs could do. Uh, the last talk of the day is going to be by Dr. Butler Lamson. Um, Butler also is world renowned, like Raj Reddy, our first speaker. Butler, the last speaker, is also a Turing Award winner. And you may have seen uh, writings by him, particularly if you are an experimental computer scientist. He's going to tell you some of his experiences in building many, many, uh, very many influential uh, systems. Um, I've learned a lot from Butler. I've known Butler's for about 20 years, and I've usually followed his advice in building a system. I used to not follow his advice, and it has led to disaster. So I figured after a few disasters, I would just follow what he says, even if I didn't completely understand at the time why he was saying that. So pay attention to his hints and, uh, um, hints and principles on building computer systems. Uh, they will stand you in great stead when you actually build uh, big, large-scale systems. And then we're going to have, after that, we're going to have some PhD posters and demos. The demos are from the lab in MSR India. The PhD posters are posters put up by uh, PhD students in various Indian universities. And then we'll have a closing. Uh, we'll have some uh, awards to give you, uh, the details of which uh, I'm sure you've been communicated to you. And I have um, nothing much more to say. I'll be back here for question and answer session. Um, I hope you enjoy the day. It's a long day, I know, but I think the talks are going to be lively. The panel discussions are going to be extremely informative. So have a good time. And this event is for you. And make full use of it. Thank you. <laughs>